Hey, I'm Alex and today we're going to work on the last problem from PSET 0 of CS50's introduction to programming with Python. The title of this problem is Tip Calculator, it's pretty self-explanatory, but let's just take a look at the problem description and afterward we'll start writing some code. In the United States, it's customary to leave a tip for your server after dining in a restaurant, typically an amount equal to 15% or more of your meal's cost. Not to worry, though, we've written a tip calculator for you below. Well, we've written most of a tip calculator for you. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to implement two functions. Dollars to float, which should accept a string as input, remove the leading dollar, and return the amount as a float. For instance, given $50, we, as you can see, we remove the dollar sign and we just return it as a float. So just 15, 15, not 15. Then we have percent to float, which should accept a string as input, um, remove the trailing percent sign and return the percentage as a float. For instance, given 15%, we remove the trailing dollar sign and then divide by 100 to receive a float or a decimal, right? 0 0.15. Assume that the user will import values in the expected formats. So here is a quick demo. We enter the price of our meal, which is $50. Then we enter the percentage we would like to tip, which is 15% um, and we receive the amount um, we should leave. Let's now begin by creating a folder for this problem. So we have um, the, the problem name is tip. So we can come here and say make a new directory, which is going to be called tip. Then change my current directory to the newly created one, which is called tip. And inside of it, create a file, so code tip.py. This is the name of the file. So we have a folder tip and inside of it, we have a file, which name is tip.py. Once we have it, we are ready to start implementing our solution. Let's begin by copying the code that has been provided to us by the CS50 staff. And let's just take a brief look over it. So we have one main function and two other supplementary ones, dollars to float and percent to float. Uh, we have to implement those, but let's focus on the main function for now. On line two, we ask the user for input and we're prompting him to enter um, the price of the meal. So how much was the meal? Then we take their input and send it as an argument to this dollars to float function. And inside of this function, we should manipulate the string, return it as a float, and then store it inside of this dollars variable. So let's imagine that the user inputs $25. We pass it as an argument to this dollars to float function, and then it returns back the same number but as a float like this so we save this 25.0 inside of this dollars variable in a similar manner we have the percent to float function so we ask the imp the user for input what percentage would you like to tip and for instance the user inputs um 15 percent we take this percentage and we send it as an argument to our percent to float function. And this percent to float function should return the same percentage, but as a float. So we remove the percent and we represent it as 0 0.15. Because whenever we want to represent a percent as a float, we divide by 100, right? That's what you've learned in math class. This is what we would like to do. And then we just come here on line 10 and we multiply the dollars, in this case 25.0, by the percentage, which is 0 0.15, to find the final tip and print it. For the dollars to float function, we take D, which is the dollars, but that's a string, right? That's a string that has a dollar sign and then a float. Now, our first task would be to replace the dollars, to remove the dollar sign. 
And the easiest way to do this is by replacing the dollar sign with an empty string. That's a technique you use quite a lot, especially in the early stages of your programming career. Um, maybe not that much when you start working, but as you go through courses, you'll find it very useful. So you can replace any character of a string with an empty string to just remove it, right? What we can say is um, formatted dollars or just D is going to equal D, which we accept as a as an argument, D dot. And then we want to say replace. What do we want to replace? We want to replace the dollar sign with an empty string, right? Let's come here and hmm, can we print it? Yes, I'm just going to comment out this code now because we ha still haven't implemented the percent to float function, but I will only want to test this dollars to float function. So here I'm just going to say print formatted dollars. So now let's run our function. We have python tip dot pi. Expecting an indented block after function definition on line 20. Okay, that's because we haven't, we don't have anything in here. So I'm, I'm going to run it again. And now how much was the meal? Let's say $25 as in the example I gave previously. Okay, we still have an error. Formatted is not defined. Oh, because I didn't write D. Okay, formatted D, right? These are the formatted dollars. One more try, um, $25. And we receive the float. Uh, it's not a float yet, by the way. It's still a string, but we have successfully removed the dollar sign, right? Because we have replaced the dollar sign with an empty string, which is basically nothing. So yeah, just $25. So now we want to convert the same thing to a float and return it back to our main function. So we can, instead of print, we can um, say return the formatted string, formatted D, sorry, not formatted string, but as a float, like this. So you, you use the float method and then inside of the braces, you just put the, like the variable you want to use. So to recap, here we're taking the dollars as a string. On line 16, we're replacing the dollar sign with an empty string, which essentially means that we are removing the dollar sign and then we are taking this, converting it into a float, into a number, a floating point number, and returning it back to our main function so that we can store it inside of this dollars variable. Let's now continue with our percent of float function, which is actually very similar. Here, we take some kind of a percent and we want to first remove the trailing percent sign. So it's going to be pretty much the same. We, we're going to say formatted P, because this is a percentage, equals P, which comes as an argument. So P dot replace. And this time we don't want to replace a dollar sign, but a percent sign with an empty string. So these two lines of code work the same way. It doesn't matter if the sign we are going to replace is in the beginning or in the end of the string. We just say, take this string P and replace the dollar, the percent sign with an empty string. So basically delete this percent sign. And once we have this, we want to find the percentage as a float. Now, um, I'm going to set up another variable, p as float. So if we have 15%, we've already removed this uh, percent sign successfully, but now we want to convert this into decimal. So if we go back to our example here, 15% is converted to 0 0.15, right? And that's what we want to do as well. So we want to take the float value of formatted P, float value of formatted P, because it's currently text, it's a string, and we want to convert it into a number, and then divide it by 100. 
because if we have 15% and we want to convert them to 0 0.15, which is divided by 100, right? And then we can just return this P as quote value. So that should be working. Um, now let's just come back to this function and safely call the percent of load function, then just calculate the tip and print it because we should be ready if everything's correct. Um, let's copy a test from here. So if we write, we, if we enter $50 and then 15%, the result should be leave $7.50. So let's try this out. I'm also going to remove these comments because we don't need them anymore. So I'm just going to call the function python tip dot pi. We have $50 and then we would like to tip 15%. And we can see that the output is indeed leave $7.50. Right, great. Let's try one more example. We have $100 and we want to tip 18%. So $100, we want to tip 18% and we would like to leave $18 of a tip. Okay, great. It seems like our program is working. So let's now continue to the testing phase where we're going to run check 50 to make sure that all the tests have passed. So you copy this, clear the console. And we can see that all of the tests are green, which means that we've passed them successfully. That was everything for this tutorial. I really hope you found it helpful. I believe that this problem was just slightly more complicated than the previous ones. But if you have any questions, please feel free to send them to me on personal message or in the comment section. Bye for now and I'll see you in the next tutorial.